hip-hop turntablist, multimedia artist, and cultural pioneer Paul D. Miller, better known as DJ Spooky, has traveled to the ends of the earth to study climate change. What he brought home from his polar expeditions has inspired books and musical compositions about the glacial terrain. Heather Longley speaks with Miller, a National Geographic emerging explorer, about the role of the artist in the realm of science. He also talks about creating meaningful digital compositions and the link between climate change and world turmoil. Can you tell me what influenced you to conceive of this project? At the end of the day, we have to realize there's some things about humanity that don't change. I'll leave it at that. The emotions, the intuition, the sense that human beings have intervened in the planet as it's evolving, these are things that, as an artist, I find really intriguing, um, and I wanted to explore more. What does your digital art do to help further a cause or to precipitate change? Well, the goal of the arts isn't necessarily about policy, you know, but we do need to have, uh, I think, better tools to understand the world around us. And the arts play, a better, I think, a very powerful role in getting people to reframe the way we think about um, our present moment. So if you look at, say, for example, the 1960s, um, the intense social change that happened with the civil rights movement wouldn't have been possible without music. Um, and on the other hand, you can easily see that what happened during the Cold War you know, between the United States and Russia, mm -hmm. the arts played a pretty powerful role to um, kind of catalyze different pers perspectives. Each culture manifested all sorts of different ways of their political ideology and ideas. But at the end of the day, it's about, I don't think art limits perspective, but actually enhances it. The cool thing about art, the art world right now is anything goes. A symphony or a string quartet made out of the sound of ice is just as powerful as, I think at least, policy and or, you know, primate science. It just needs to be um, a handmaiden to those kind of issues. Like, imagine if science had better soundtracks, you know, um, I think it'd be more, uh, I think you'd have more impact. Let's put that way. Have you revisited the Arctic since your first time there? Have there been any changes in the data that might alter your musical outcome? Yeah, so I also have gone I've come a couple times with different groups. The only thing that's changed really is that it's getting deeper and weirder and more intense weather patterns, droughts, floods, viruses that are um, being enabled because of, you know, warm and wet weather that's getting weirder. Because I'll give you one example. Um, I was just in India. And in India, they're facing uh, massive climate change issues, mainly based on heat waves mm -hmm. and water rerouting. And they had uh, the hottest year on record. But then you look around the rest of the world, and everyone had the hottest year on record. Mm -hmm. So, if, again, just comparing notes and data, you'd be surprised. People need to really think that this is not just an isolated incident. It's a pattern. So do you think the relativism, you know, in accordance to what, changes in different parts of the world, does that change your outcome or that? Well, let's put it this way. I mean, as a composer, I look around me. I mean, everything is connected. Nothing is separate. And you have to think of music and science and math and digital media and the arts as reflections of one another. And if anyone that's creative right now is using physical materials and software and or like thinking more about the kind of conceptual issues facing you know, what it means to be human on this planet. And at the moment, it's getting, I would say, just weird. I mean, for example, the Zika virus that's coming out in Latin America, it's heartbreaking. Um, and one could also argue that the, the wave of refugees coming out of Syria is heartbreaking. Okay, we both understand that these are really bad things. But say, for example, if I, if I switched the perspective and said, look, Climate change is actually a component of these two horrible, heavy things happening. And most people step back and say, wait a second, what, what does climate change have to do with people fleeing the war? Well, you could say the war is caused by political instability, caused by access and or lack of access to resources. So, for example, the viruses that are being spread because of the mosquitoes right. and because their ecosystem is being challenged by more wet uh, weather that have enabled water to gather in certain places. And that water is gathering in plastic pumps and other materials that have been thrown as trash. Right. Uh, you know, so all of this stuff, if you just dial it in a little bit, it's, you can see it's connected and these are patterns. So let's say music is nothing but patterns. So you just think of it as a composition and that's a start. So you have your 
data from the Arctic, uh, what are the steps then for turning it into a musical composition? I can take the mathematics of ice, like hexagonal form, permutation, and, and so on. And that's fine. It sounds really beautiful. It's just ethereal electronics that are, that are kind of going underneath the composition. But I also wanted to make it accessible to an audience. And that means beat, that means tempo, that means key and tone. Okay. If you're a composer, these are, these are your tools. With hip-hop, techno, dubstep, all of the music that uh, people you know, are currently sort of listening to, you have to remember that they're based on usually 4-4 four, four tempo. So that means that you have very specific rules. Would you say then that the outcome of mathematics in tone is ambient? No, no, it's beat with ambient and with electronics going underneath it. If, you, if I sent you a beat, right, that was just like boom, bap, boom, bap, that's boring. Um, if somebody raps over it, that adds one layer of mm-hmm. linguistics, it adds poetry, it adds a kind of poetic dimension. If I add a bass line, if I add piano, strings, it gets a little more complex and those layers are all playing at, you know, in the same space at the same time. If, if you're a mathematician looking at that, you get what you call polyphony. And you also get multiple layers going on. I'm an artist. I mean, this stuff for me is, does it work? You know, does it look cool? Does it sound cool? Um, but if I need to break it down to you, you know, as a, as a person listening, mm-hmm. I'm not going to be over your shoulder every time somebody presses play. So you need to be able to make it reasonably accessible. Um, and that's part of the role of the artist right now is making data become art. Data is a cold medium. It, it's not something that your average person is going to just say, hey, you know what, I've been listening to you know, Wu-Tang Clan's interpretation of climate data. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it's like they they need to have some additional you know, pull, you know, gravity to pull them into the mix. I get it, yeah. So okay. that's what this is about, some layers. And it's, these are bits and pieces that can easily be remixed, too. I don't want you to feel like there's one version. There's not. Is there anything else you could say to me that might help me convey this somewhat complex project to the general? At the end of the day, it's all about patterns. Music is a pattern, science is patterns, and climate is patterns. Okay. And how do you balance, you know, moving between one pattern to another? You synchronize. You know, you try to figure out how to um, look at everything around you as it being connected. Um, and to me, that's what music and arts is really good at. It creates an intuitive place where all of these things can come together. Experience the polar regions as heard through the ear of Paul D. Miller in Arctic Rhythms, March 23, 2016, at Penn State's Eisenhower Auditorium. For tickets or information, visit cpa.psu.edu or phone 800-ARTS-TIX.